Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at LGT Transport. Today we're going to be going over our anhydrous ammonia trailers. We have a new one sitting here right behind us. We're going to go over how the product works, what's the meaning of the name, what kind of tanker hauls it, and how we equip our tanker specifically. So join us along for the ride. All right, so on this side of the tanker would be the driver's side. We have our data plate. As you can see up here, we'll roll to it here in a second. But basically what I want to go over is the fact that this is an MC331. And you can actually use it for both anhydrous ammonia as well as liquid propane. However, in this case, it's going to be different from our MC331 we use for carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide trailer is a uh, insulated trailer. So you have an inner shell and outer shell with insulation in between. This is what they call an exposed vessel type. So there's no insulation required, so you have your tank right here. And then uh, pressure on it, instead of 300, is 265. Now normally the product never gets to 265. It's mainly during like a loading procedure or a purging procedure where you're going to see that kind of pressure. You should only see about 100 pounds on maybe a 70 degree day, something like that. Um, if it gets hot, obviously the pressure will increase just due to the temperature of the product inside, right? Um, they can use the same seals between CO2 and propane when it comes to the pump, which is kind of interesting, but we'll get into more of that later. But the main thing I wanted to bring up was your max pressure, MAWP 265. Now propane technically could be a 250, but because we made this a swing trailer, it's 265, so it can house both products if we needed it to. And there's a process for purging one product into another, which we'll go over. The other thing is, is of course the inspections. You have your same inspections with a CO2 tanker and an MC331 of a five-year test of both the internal and pressure. And then you have an annual test of your visual and your leakage, which creates your VKIP. And that is basically the sum of that. Now our specific tankers is going to be a 44,500 max payload in pounds. Um, I'll have to do a calculation to get that in gallons and I'll put that in the description below. But that's sort of the initial description of what our anhydrous tankers are set up like. And we'll get into more specifics now. All right, so we're back at the front of the trailer here. The first thing I want to bring up is the difference in setup between most of our other units and this trailer specifically. It's a hydraulic unit. It's one of our uh, nine total or 10 total hydraulic units, I believe. And basically we started that with the anhydrous ammonia. We've been getting more and more into hydraulics as we uh, do more work with our customers in certain areas and we decided that uh, we would try hydraulics out on the anhydrous side. Now hydraulics is just a difference between the pony motor and the hydraulic system. They both drive the product off of the trailer and instead of using a pony motor or a small diesel power unit we're using hydraulic flow that's powered by the truck so you do have to spec your truck out to match with the hydraulic system that you put on your trailers. Alright so when you have the hydraulic unit Pushing the fluid to the back of the trailer, first comes this valve. In this valve, you have a 90 degree turn, which makes it turn on. Before you do that switch, you're basically recirculating the fluid from the truck through the first part of this trailer to this valve. When you turn that on, it comes down here to your hydraulic motor, takes that fluid motion, turns it into a rotational motion, and then offloads to your pump by turning that and shooting the liquid out, right? Now from here, the main difference you can see in our cabinet, the first obvious one is obviously it is not enclosed. It's an open cabinet scheme, so you can see all your valves. Now the other side of that is you still have to have a break interlock when it comes to all tankers. So what we do, and what most people do when it comes to propane and anhydrous, is you have this plate here which guards your valves, but it also has a spring-loaded clamp which hides your interlock valve. And you have to have an interlock valve on a tanker because if you're offloading, you want safety in, in the brakes being set. And so that's what this valve does. You push it in, it releases the brakes. Once you open this panel, it releases it. So the trailer is not going anywhere. Now when it comes to our valve work, we have uh, a pump discharge, a vapor, and a liquid. And all, this, all the valves are three-piece ball valves here. And it's basically a 90 degree turn to open the valve, 90 degree to close. Uh, they're pretty simple, pretty standard. We use them on our CO2 trailers as well. Um, but when you get into the internal valves, that's going to be your major difference between CO2 and anhydrous. Now here you see you get a little diaphragm. 
And basically it's like a little brake chamber. That's probably a better way to put it. You supply air to that brake chamber and it opens the internal mechanism of the valve and supplies your vapor, in this case, I'm on the vapor line, to this line and this valve. And so then you would use this valve to then equalize your pressure, in this case, when it comes to anhydrous. Um, once we get into the internal valves, you have air pressure coming from the truck to the trailer to operate those valves. And we're gonna move on here in just a second to the safety mechanism of those valves. But one more safety mechanism I wanna bring up while we're here is this piece right here. It's called your mass flow valve. And what that does is if you have a breakaway, and what we mean by a breakaway is a hose breaks away or a, a valve goes loose and basically you have a mass exodus of all product, it's a really dangerous situation. But how you stop it is you have a mass flow valve and it's spring loaded, pressure loaded, so if it feels that it's being pulled too hard, it will snap shut and basically cut off your flow. Now, of course, basically that's, you know, it's going to harm everything kind of downwind of that, but it's going to save lives in the fact that it stops the flow of the product. So that's why it's necessary to have that on there. But follow me now and we'll kind of get to the safety mechanisms of this trailer in more detail. All right, everybody. So we're going to talk about the emergency shutoff here basically the safety mechanism that we have um, installed on our trailers is an emergency shutoff. Every anhydrous trailer is required to have one. It's required to be labeled and it's also required that it's an ease of access. You should be able to run from where the product is to this, shut it off, and then get clear of the trailer. So in our case what we have here is an air shutoff. So the internal valves we were just describing run on air. So when the air pressure gets there, you can use the air pressure to flip a switch and that will activate that brake chamber to open the valve. So how do you stop that? You decrease the pressure of the air going to the valve. And that's exactly what this does. It's a 90 degree turn, it's very simple. You turn that, it evacuates all the air from the trailer. There's a valve in here that uh, goes down and it's basically just a little dump valve. So it's almost like a suspension dump. But in this case, it's for cases where you have a breakaway or you have a mass loss of product. You hit that, you get clear. It's very simple. There's also one on the diagonal opposite on the front left fender. So we got the right rear fender, front left fender. I do not believe that you need to have it on a specific fender, but you do need to have it crossways, right? So in this case, we have one on the right rear and the left front. And then we'll move over to the other side and talk about some more safety features. All right. So here we're at the liquid hose. We're gonna start by talking about the safety feature within the liquid hose. Now this liquid hose basically is a safety feature built in itself. They call it a smart hose. Now a smart hose is defending itself from a breakaway, which is the main safety feature you're trying to prevent or trying to be able to mitigate losses um, as well as save lives, okay? In this case, um, what you have in here, and we'll get a close-up of it here in a second, but uh, you have a flap tied to a steel braided cord that runs the length of the hose, and uh, it's protected from the uh, chemicals that you'll be hauling, but over time they will wear out, which is why every year these need to be certified along with your annual VK inspection. But what will happen is if you have a breakaway, say the hose breaks off here, you have a flap in here that's going to get hit with pressure, and it's going to slam shut on you right? And that's how it's basically going to shut off your flow. So if your mass flow doesn't work, you have a secondary, and then you also have your air shut off for the internal valves, right? So that's essentially what this is. There's not really much more to say about it, but it is always important to make sure that these are tested every year, okay? And then you always have a dust cap that goes into those. Now, we're going to get into some of the propane safety features. Number one, let's talk about propane as a product. Um, obviously propane is a flammable uh, liquid as well as a gas. And so that is obviously the reason for a fire extinguisher. Now if I remember correctly, this is a 20 pound fire extinguisher. And uh, that is what's required in every case when it comes to propane transport. Um, you do need to have it secured to the trailer. This also needs to be checked every year to make sure it has not been discharged. If it has been discharged, it needs to be refilled and recertified and then re 
reinstalled back on the trailer. Okay. Then you also have your blow downs and your blow off, as they call it here. And they actually have labels for it. You got a blow off, which goes up for liquid propane, which is LP. And then you got a blow off down for NH3 or anhydrous ammonia. Okay. And the last safety feature we're going to get into is going to be your grounding cables down here. When it comes to propane, static electricity is very dangerous. So you need to make sure that you have a grounding cable that can attach to the trailer at the grounding terminal. And then there's also going to be a grounding terminal at each site of a propane tank that you hook to to make sure that you're grounded the entire time you offload. And that's really going to conclude all the safety features on the tank and basic operation of how it works. So if you have any questions, I feel free to uh, leave a comment like, subscribe, and keep tuned for more content. And we'll uh, release a video here in a short while related to the actual offload procedure of an anhydrous ammonia transport, including the safety features a driver must wear in PPE related to that offload as well. Thanks for watching.